Aston Martin have become the latest team to reveal the 2024 Challenger, and surprise surprise, it is British Racing Green. Beyond that though, the team spoke about their plans for the season and laid down the gauntlet for Red Bull. Fernando Alonso also found himself in front of the media for the first time since Lewis Hamilton's move to Ferrari and made some big claims about his own future. Today, I'm going to check out the AMR24, what Aston Martin wants to achieve this season, and what Fernando Alonso's future looks like, so don't go anywhere. Aston Martin have become the latest team to show off their new car for the 2024 season. Following on from Haas, Williams, Kick Sauber, Alpine and VCarb, it was Aston Martin's turn to launch with a special presentation from their Silverstone headquarters on Monday morning. Owner Lawrence Stroll, team principal Mike Crack, technical director Dan Fallows and drivers Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll were all on hand for the unveiling of the AMR24, which once again sports a British racing green livery. Featuring some exposed black carbon fiber, the livery will still be distinctive with the slightly chromatic classy green. I can confidently say you definitely aren't going to mistake this for the green and black kick sauber on the TV coverage, that's for sure. For a team burdened with a historic reputation in other forms of motorsport, especially at Le Mans where they're regular winners, Aston Martin has struggled to translate its winning pedigree into Grand Prix racing since re-entering F1 in 2021. Taking over the Racing Point team that was struggling to find their identity after the pink Mercedes incident, Aston Martin floundered for two years, despite having the outstanding Sebastian Vettel behind the wheel of one car. But last year told a very different story. With a newly signed Fernando Alonso replacing Vettel, the AMR23 began its F1 campaign as a legitimate race-winning contender. Epic drives from both Alonso and Stroll in Bahrain set the tone of what was to come in the early stages of the season, as Aston Martin scored six podium finishes in the first eight races. But as the season progressed, development stalled, upgrades failed to have the desired effect, and a new lack of pace demoted the previously front-running team into the depths of the midfield. The upgrades didn't just fail to improve the AMR23, they made it fussier as well, meaning that setting up the car became almost impossible, and it just wasn't suited to the majority of F1 tracks. Nevertheless, Alonso continued to highlight his talent, with surprise podium visits in Zandvoort and Sao Paulo, but his performance raised serious questions about the ability of his teammate. Despite the increased performance of the car beneath him, Stroll failed to score a single podium finish in 2023, his best result coming in Australia where he finished fourth and was outqualified by his teammate in 19 out of 22 rounds. The Canadian did show signs of progress toward the end of the season, with back-to-back fifth-place finishes in Brazil and Las Vegas. But if Aston Martin wants to compete with the likes of Red Bull and Ferrari, both drivers will need to be firing on all cylinders. Stroll's struggles were not the team's biggest issue, though. The failings of the team in the development race were. There was a clear message that this had been addressed for 2024 in a press release accompanying the launch images, though. We want to compete in the development race this season, and this car is designed to do just that, said technical director Dan Fallows. Another area of focus has been to broaden the car's operating window. We focused on more versatility for a wider range of specific circuit characteristics. We want a race car that is more of an all-rounder. We believe the AMR24 provides the ideal platform for in-season development and a sustained season-long challenge. Improvement is undoubtedly expected by Aston Martin F1 owner Lawrence Stroll and team principal Mike Crack made sure the world knew that his team was making that happen. Since the last race in 2023, everyone has been hyper-focused on improvements in every area, concentrating our efforts on what really makes a difference, what really matters to be better, he said. Almost every area of the car has been refined and improved, building on our strengths and taking on board the lessons of the previous campaign. 2023 was our best season to date, and our goal this season is to score regular points, podiums and fight for our first win in green. So what does that actually mean for the car? Well, from the looks of it, a lot of things. The AMR24 has been refined in almost all areas, but has some noticeable differences compared to last year's model, including its nose and front wing. The nose cone now attaches to the second element of the front wing, not the first, which will help channel more air under the car. It's also a little bit of weight reduction as well. 
There is also some much stronger contouring along the nose aimed at shedding air down and out as well. The side pod inlet looks very different with a big protruding lower lip. The aim here is to get more air traveling under the side pod. That air will do two things. Firstly, it will pass under the side pod to the beam wing and diffuser outlet, increasing the downforce created by the rear end. Secondly, it will pass over the floor edge, helping to create the vortices that are vital to trapping air under the floor and making the Venturi tunnels built into the floor work. To help that, the shape of the undercut beneath the side pod has been refined. The shape of the side pods themselves has been changed as well. They still have that distinctive gully down the middle which channels air to the diffuser outlet and beam wing, but the start of that gully has been moved toward the back of the car. It also looks like they've gained some volume on the outside edge of the gully. There will of course be a new and improved floor as well, but until Stroll or Alonso bin the car on a street track and it needs craning out, we won't know what has changed. Something that is interesting about the AMR24 is what it tells us about what Mercedes has been up to over the winter. Aston Martin by their engine, gearbox and rear suspension from Merck, and now we know what that rear suspension looks like. The first images of the AMR24 show a switch to a pushrod rear suspension, which will match the soon-to-be-revealed Merck car. As Aston Martin technical director Dan Fallows explained, We inherited some new suspension from Mercedes. They give us the gearbox and the structure of the rear suspension, so that has changed slightly from last year as well. So there's a change on the rear, but on the front, it's very similar. There is a trade-off to having the inboard suspension components higher up with a pushrod design, which is not great from a weight and center of gravity point of view. However, in moving those items higher up, it is clearing more room in the coke bottle region and diffuser area for better manipulation of airflow for the floor and rear wing, which should deliver more downforce. Aston Martin will be hoping that all of these changes will have righted the wrongs of last season and provided them with a car capable of winning races. That will, of course, require them to beat Red Bull though, something that was basically impossible last year. But having seen some impressive gains made up and down the field, including McLaren's stunning mid-season transformation, Aston Martin reckon Red Bull can be caught. Aston Martin technical director Dan Fallows said the team were confident they've made a good step over the winter with the AMR24. There's still a lot of lap time to come, and we take the approach that Red Bull are absolutely beatable, Fallows, a former Red Bull employee, said. That's what we're chasing after. We're focusing on them and that's what we're aiming for. He added, We talk about Red Bull because they are the benchmark in terms of performance. Really for us, whoever is the fastest car is the focus for us. And that's what we're looking at. Rather than thinking about individual races from an engineering point of view, we have to make a car that's capable of operating at any circuit and being competitive. That's really what we're focused on. Making a car that is usable and good for the drivers. And that's what we've really been trying to focus on. Those sort of competitive stats and how we get closer to Red Bull will come after that. If we put that performance on the car, then we've given ourselves the opportunity to compete at that level which is exactly what we want. A big part of Aston Martin competing at the same level as Red Bull will be their star driver Fernando Alonso. The 42-year-old Spaniard proved in 2023 that age is just a number, and he's as competitive as he has ever been. Although Alonso is 43 this summer, he said he believed he could continue to race in F1 for several more years, as long as he was motivated, and that he was performing better in fitness tests this winter than ever before having taken into his team a nutritionist. But he is also wary of the fact this is the longest season in F1 history, with 24 races. The two-time champion, who has already competed in 20 seasons, said, Maybe I would have said 41 or 42 before. Now I can think, maybe I can race for a few more years. So I would say, if you are motivated and want to commit, you can drive until 48 or 49, or maybe even 50. But at the same time, you have to give up everything in life. F1 needs total dedication. I gave my life for this. I'm happy with that, and I can keep going for a few more years, but I don't know if I'll be racing until 50 with such a demanding calendar as that. Not for the abilities, but because there are other things in life I'm curious about. A continuation in Formula 1 beyond 2024 is not guaranteed for Alonso though, as he is out of contract at the end of the season. Not that anyone would believe that he wouldn't get signed up for a team if he wanted to. 
Hamilton's move to Ferrari has opened up Alonso's options beyond this season quite dramatically. Plenty of outlets are linking Alonso with a move to the Silver Arrows. Mercedes are known to be thinking about promoting Italian rising star Andrea Kimi Antonelli, who is making his debut in Formula 2 this year and is widely considered the next potential megastar. He is only 17 though and having skipped F3, even if he won the F2 title this season, it might be too soon to offer him a full drive in F1. With that in mind, Alonso could be the perfect stopgap for Mercedes. The 42-year-old said he had had no contact with Mercedes so far. There are only three world champions on the grid and fast world champions, because in the past, maybe there were some champions who were maybe not so committed to be fast. And I'm probably the only one available for 2025, so I'm in a good position. But at the same time, when I make the decision whether I want to keep racing in the future, the first and only talk I'll have in the beginning will be with Aston Martin. That will be my only priority, but if we cannot reach an agreement and I want to commit to racing F1, I know I have a privileged position. I am probably attractive to other teams, the performance they saw last year, the commitment. The problem with a potential move to Mercedes, with young Antonelli waiting in the wings, is that Wolf wouldn't want to sign him to a long-term contract. Alpine attempted that ahead of the 2023 season, thinking they could keep Fernando on for a one-year contract and then promote Piastri to a full race seat in 2024. Alonso was so pissed off at the team's disrespect that he signed with Aston Martin and waited long enough to announce it that Oscar's pre-contract with Alpine voided and the young Aussie could sign for McLaren. Alonso would not move to Mercedes on a one-year contract, and considering the Silver Arrows were only willing to offer Hamilton one year at a team, it seems unlikely they would offer Alonso more. Aston Martin added that they want to keep Alonso next year. We love Fernando. We have a very good relationship with him. He's an integral part of the team, said Aston Martin team principal Mike Crack. We have a relationship based on trust and openness, and we would be delighted to continue with Fernando into 2025 and the year after. So, do you think that Aston Martin can catch Red Bull this year and get their first race win? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.